Show. I'm here with Colleen Smith, and we're talking with Michelle Sokola, who is a candidate for Board of Selectmen. Um, and you're presently a member of the planning board. Yes, so, I am. Um, and as you know, we're sort of getting together here at Via Lago to, to talk with candidates um, about their positions and giving you an opportunity to, through us, to talk to the voters here in Lexington. So. Um, well, thank you we, for joining yeah, us. Thanks for being and here. Thank this you morning. for organizing this. This is really terrific and a wonderful opportunity that I think is a lot of fun. So I appreciate your effort, both of you. Great. Well, thank you. Great. Why don't we start, Michelle, with talking about you grew up in Lexington I and did. you have two children that are in the Lexington schools. Um, and with your experience in the planning board and also involved with so many different um, uh, town uh, boards, as well as your experience in your job, why don't you talk a little bit about working for um, the town of Hudson and how um, that experience can parlay into your experience as selectman. Sure, terrific, thank you for the question. Um, I've been working in municipal government for two decades now. It's hard to believe, but um, after getting a graduate degree in public policy, I went directly into uh, working for the town of Hudson. Prior to that, I was doing economic development for the city of Chelsea. And my role in Hudson was the assistant town administrator for almost 14 years and community development director. Hudson's a smaller community than Lexington, and so we had uh, fewer staff, if you will, doing all these different uh, roles and responsibilities. So it was mm -hmm. a very wide-ranging role that included preparing the capital plan and uh, helping prepare the budget and personnel management and large project, capital project management. And so as my job evolved into doing more and more capital project work, um, I also was um, received the added title of community development director. So I did that for almost 14 years mm -hmm. and a, a few years ago decided that, you know, with my kids at the age that they were at and um, my career unfolding, I wanted to have more flexibility to do um, things for my personal life and um, and also have more volunteer opportunity here in Lexington. So I went part-time um, almost five years ago and retained the role as community development director. But I think it's important that you know I did see what it's like to manage a community mm -hmm. um, and the wide range of issues that you deal with as a manager and was very, very intimately familiar with um, capital project management as well and continue to do that in Hudson. So I'm still in Hudson, but only three days a week. Okay. Right. And, and you're also president of the Metropolitan Area Planning Council? I am. I mean, that's a big deal. It, it, I think it's so. It's kind of neat. It's, it's neat. It's, a, it's my privilege to be able to do that. The Metropolitan Area Planning Council is the planning council for Lexington and 101 cities and towns in the Boston region, including Boston and all the uh, urban center communities. Uh, we go all, all the way out to 495, down to Braintree, up to the North Shore. So it's a pretty large planning area. Um, and Massachusetts, by statute, has 13 planning regions. So each of the towns in the planning region sends a member to the council. And from the council members themselves, they elect an executive committee and officers. So for years, I served on executive committee and then um, eventually moved up and did a couple of years as vice president. And this is my third year serving as uh, president. What that affords me is the opportunity to see a wide range of different community types mm -hmm. and really the, um, the issues that communities face um, from multi different perspectives, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not right. just... And how each of the communities deal with it, because mm -hmm. they right. all deal with them in different ways. They do, but with certain best practices yeah. will often arise from that. So, right. so while you have to recognize the uniqueness of each community, um, there's also some good practices that, that develop, and I think that's really been a great uh, privilege of mine to be able to work with a, a wide range of communities and, mm. and be well versed in the issues. So Michelle, another committee that you've been very active on is the um, Committee for the New Community Center. Why don't you talk a little bit about where you see the role of that community center and your role um, if you were to be elected as selectman and, and where you see that in the f moving in the future. Sure. Thank you for the question. The community center is a really exciting project and the community is really enthusiastic about this new opportunity we have to run programming for all ages and uh, both multicultural and multi-generational programming. Mm -hmm. So uh, initially the work of the community center as chair, we've been focusing on getting into the building as quickly as we can. The building does need some modifications to transition from a office building to a, a public mm -hmm. municipal building and there are some you know, code compliance issues and, and uh, HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, all the sort of routine things that you have to do to, to remake the building in a way that is functional for the public. So that's been our focus in the short term, but the long term focus is really to de help develop programs that the community really wants to see in that space. And as we saw at the open house, there were almost 400 people that came. We, we had comments, uh, nearly 300 different comments and suggestions, which was very exciting to see because mm. there's a high level of engagement. So if I'm elected, um, I think one of the roles will be to make sure that that, pro that project moves forward in a timely fashion mm -hmm. and um, 
continues to meet the needs that the community has expressed. Mm -hmm. There are some long-term goals to expand that facility, mm -hmm. and right now um, the funding will take some time before we can get the funding in the pipeline to do an expansion there, but certainly we've heard from years of study that the, the facility will need a larger multi-purpose room to be able to accommodate the number of people we want to be able to serve in a banquet-style facility and in mm -hmm. larger meetings and functions but also the desire to have a gym so that we can have um, the recreation programming physical for all activity, ages right. and physical activity to really help the, f the community focus on health mm -hmm. and well-being and right now we don't have a, a space like that that can be used um, all day long you know we have certainly gyms at the schools but nothing that can be used during the school day for adults and for small mm -hmm. children and whatnot so is there a timeline on when the town will begin to occupy that building the timeline is um, is being refined, and um, there's two different scenarios right now that we're looking at. One is a, a January occupancy of next year, so mm -hmm. right around a year from now, and the other timeline will extend about three or four months, possibly even six months from there, based on whether or not we do the HVAC upgrades as part of the first construction project or whether we do the HVAC once we're occupying the building. And there are trade-offs to both. One is a phasing and disruption consideration and the other is accelerating um, actual occupancy. So not to give you an um, no, no, obscure just, answer, but uh, we are very, we're looking very closely at the two different scenarios and seeking input mm -hmm. from the current Board of Selectmen right. on right. what their preference is for um, when we will occupy it. Right. Okay. So on more of a personal level, Michelle, why don't you talk a little bit about your um, kind of style and how you think you know, your kind of personality traits would positively impact um, being a part of, of the board? Sure. Thank you for that question. Uh, I think government is a messy process, and um, it's a fun process, but you have to approach it with a, um, a positive attitude, you have to approach it with optimism, and a collaborative approach, because in a community like Lexington, we have a, a very large number of um, civic participants mm -hmm. in the process, which is really wonderful, and in some cases unprecedented. Not all towns have the wealth of participation that we have here in Lexington. We want to encourage that and continue to utilize that uh, to help make our community better. And so I always try to take an approach that really incorporates um, a wide range of viewpoints. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the kind of person who really likes to listen and solicit feedback and input because I think at the end of the day you have a better end product. Mm -hmm. The more people you can listen to, the more ideas you can synthesize, the better outcomes you're going to have. So. Um, you know, I am definitely um, an optimist to the point of sometimes being a naive optimist, if you will. <laughs> My boss used to call me the head of impossible projects. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he'd put me on the ones that were going to be hard and difficult to tackle, and I'd have to find a way to move them along one step at a time. And, and um, usually I did. Very rarely has a project fallen through the cracks. Um, so because I just try to um, bring people together. Great, and you, you talked a little bit about you know tenacity and how that's uh, such a such a great attribute to have and something that we need um, you know to be part of a, yeah. to be a selectman. Local yeah. government is slow, and people get frustrated with it. And it's slow because it's complex. And if it weren't slow, we wouldn't be in, um, producing an inclusive process. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a certain amount of patience mm -hmm. in local government to do it right. Mm -hmm. You can't just charge forward blindly. And so unlike a business that might be able to make a unilateral decision and mm -hmm. go and implement that decision tomorrow in a government, you, you can't and shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So right. having the patience and the perseverance mm -hmm. to um, not give up on something, not get frustrated, but to move it along and understand this is the next decision we have to make, be clear on that, get the community to come to consensus, make that decision then implement move on and and that's sort of my approach and, and you've got an emo emotional investment in this community you you were raised here so, I was. so you, you you're from this town you've watched it you've grown up here you've seen how it has grown as a community as well yeah. so you can you can bring some of the, some of your sort of thoughts and ideas from what this community used to be and sort of pairing it together with going forward, you mm -hmm. know, um, kind of gives you a unique perspective. I, 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 think. I think so. I mean, I have both the professional perspective and the personal perspective, and um, I'm intensely loyal, as you say. I've, I, you know, one of my only goals uh, as a young person was to be able to afford to buy a house here and live here in town and, and raise my children here because I felt that the opportunity that growing up in Lexington gave me was just tremendously beneficial, and I wanted my own family to have that. And so I definitely have the perspective of... Um, 
of the beauty and opportunity here in town um, that is worth protecting and enhancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the, um, in, in talking about housing, one of the issues that people have been talking a lot about is, is the issue around affordable housing mm -hmm. and, and also the senior citizens and how we can, you know, help keep senior citizens in their house as well as, um, you know, and this all impacts the schools. And as we sit here and interview all the candidates, you really see how there's so many different overlapping and integral um, parts. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the issue of affordable housing and sure. where you see the role sure. of being selectmen um, can impact that. Yep. Um, affordable housing is very complex because it's uh, the state provides a series of different regulatory opportunities to do affordable housing, but it's not a, a, a one-size-fits-all or there's not just one program that you follow. And finding the right type of program that fits Lexington's needs is, is difficult. Um, one of the things that I participated on the League of Women Voters Housing Forum a couple months ago, and I'm on the Lexington Housing Partnership. Um, uh, and I've been trying to come up with some new ways to approach having more diversity in our housing stock through potentially through zoning where in my planning board hat there is an opportunity to maybe um, enhance some of the types of zoning we have today. We have um, ba balanced housing mm -hmm. development, which is what it's called mm -hmm. as a zoning type, and there are ways to potentially make that a little bit better and a little bit more appealing so that the market rate housing that developers produce is more in line with what we need as this society ages. But also I've given a lot of thought to keeping seniors in their home and what could we do to help them and it's possible that there are ways to develop um, support programs that enable a loan to be made to a se uh, the seniors on fixed income to mm -hmm. prepare and, and maintain their home, mm -hmm. um, bring down their costs of maintenance and, and use that as a springboard for um, developing an affordable housing unit going forward. So mm -hmm. you could do a deed restriction at the end of that project that would enable um, that house to stay affordable to the next family that occupies it. So it helps the seniors that are there today potentially stay in their home and then it could pass forward to the next owner mm -hmm. um, and remain affordable. So that's something that I'm interested in exploring and trying to, to bring about. One of the other um, things that, that has come up uh, in, in interviewing some of the candidates is around the schools and also um, the overcrowding at the schools. And I know this is really an issue that the school committee um, will be looking at with the superintendent, but I thought maybe you could touch upon your views on, on where that is and um, where you, how you see you know, addressing that moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a very, very tricky issue and um, certainly is primarily in the domain of the, of the school committee and the superintendent, but um, I think one of the ways the town can help is to maintain a, a solid budget and what we have in recent years been doing an excellent job through uh, the town manager's efforts and town meeting's efforts and our appropriation and capital expenditures committees uh, to set aside money for uh, debt service relief. So there's been money put into the stabilization account to help absorb the impact of some of these capital projects as they come forward. And mm -hmm. we do know that you know we do have school building projects that are going to continue to come forward um, that are being evaluated and looked at right now. Hastings, for instance, mm -hmm. um, and on the long term, that still far down the road, but coming is the is the high school, and what to do about that. Um, and I think really being vigilant about how we manage our capital today mm -hmm. and our operating budget, it will really help provide the community some flexibility to do what it needs to do in the future for, for the overcrowding. Mm -hmm. um, re regarding the zoning issues and housing and how that impacts school-aged children, that's a much, much more complex issue and one that we have to watch. I'm pleased to see the demographics study group that's um, been working on this issue. Mm -hmm. What we have to recognize in, in Lexington is um, all communities are experiencing the baby boomer um, retirement mm -hmm. uh, advancing. Right. And that means that some of these houses are going to be opened up to new families as people retire and choose not to stay here. And New England, because it's expensive, and Lexington, because it's even more expensive, may have a higher rate of housing turnover mm -hmm. than other communities where people might stay in their houses longer. So we have to look very carefully on the housing stock um, and, the, and the turnover rate, because that will uh, affect mm -hmm. school okay. age kids. That's very helpful. Right. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, the election's ma um, March 3rd, Monday, March 3rd, so it's coming right up. Um, you know, I know that you've served for the past three years on the planning board, and I know you're quite comfortable. It sounds to me like you've been getting ready for this position for a long time. Uh, it's, you know, and I say that you know with a smile on my face because I've seen you and I've seen how hard you worked over the years, serving in all these various capacities. But ultimately, you know, 
being able to bring your experience to this board. And I'm talking about you know, your experience in Hudson, your experience in, with the, the, the area of planning council and yeah. others. I mean, I think you, yeah. you, you sound like you're ready to do this, uh, to really move forward and work on behalf of Lexington in this yeah. new role. Yeah, I, you know, I think I could jump on the board and not have a learning curve that would be significant. I think I'd be ready to go right out of the gate. But I, I wouldn't say that I've been preparing for this for a long time. No. My boss said to me once a long time ago, you're going to be a future selectman. I said, are you kidding? No way. <laughs> I would, you know, I just didn't imagine because mm -hmm. I've been a government employee working a, a staff for so right. long. I never imagined myself you know, mm -hmm. moving into this role. On the other hand, having spent three years on the planning board, I've really enjoyed that opportunity in that time. But I've, un I've developed a greater understanding of how the cross-cutting issues need to be dealt with at the board of selectmen level and really can't be dealt with at the planning board level. Transportation in particular, an area where I'm mm -hmm. really um, mm -hmm. focused on in my professional life and have done quite a bit on, mm -hmm. um, is something that, an area of expertise that I think I can really add value to the current board of selectmen. Um, I spend a lot of time, I built a rail trail in Hudson, similar to the Minuteman Trail. Um, mm -hmm. That was my project to oversee the first phase of the Aspet River Rail Trail and got all the funding and then hired the engineers and oversaw the, the construction of the first five and a half miles. But from there I've developed a real expertise in um, all transportation matters from roads and bridges. We're doing an 11 million dollar highway expansion right now in Hudson that, I, that was my project. And it's not dissimilar from Hartwell Ave and Bedford Street. It's, a, it's very, very similar because it goes through the retail corridor and, and commercial corridors. Uh, many of the same issues, needing to improve bike and pedestrian mobility, needing to plan for future transit opportunities, um, and just the costs associated and the with upgrading. Thing, the making sure it's all working. That's hand right. Glove. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess this is a very long-winded way of saying that um, while I haven't been planning for a long time to run for selectman, it really I came to understand that I would be well suited to that role because yeah. I could help bring the different boards and committees together sure. toward a common purpose. And that's what I meant: preparing. You know, not necessarily planning, um, but you know, sort of uniquely preparing yourself for this next challenge. Mm. I'm certainly ready yeah. for it. At least I feel ready for it. If the, <laughs> if the community thinks I'm ready for it, I will gladly uh, take the opportunity that arises if I'm elected. Well, well we're so well, glad great. you could yes. be with Thank us Thank you, Michelle, morning. for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And we welcome you, the, uh, wish you the best of luck on Monday, March 3rd. And thank you again for joining us for coffee at Via Laca. Yeah. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Best of luck. Thanks so much.